Hey guys, this is part three in my Stage Tracks 3 video series. In today's video, I'm going to be going over sending MIDI and receiving MIDI using Stage Tracks 3. So for receiving MIDI, you can control the app using, you know, a foot controller. So instead of having to control your iPad with your hands, you can actually control it with your feet or just any other MIDI device. And you can also send MIDI commands to your external devices using Stage Tracks 3. So instead of, you know, having to step on a pedal to turn on your delay and your boost, for you know a guitar solo or something like that, Stage Tracks 3 will send that command to your pedal. And then you don't have to pedal dance. You don't even actually need your pedals in front of you. I gig like that for a long time with my bands. I wouldn't even have a pedal in front of me and my computer or an app would send MIDI commands to my pedals and I could just focus on performing. Very, very cool and very helpful. So I'm gonna be going over both of these in this video. Don't forget, I will be doing a giveaway to one of my subscribers to unlock all of the features in this app for free. So you'll have the full version of it. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to win that. I'm gonna interject here for a minute. Peter the developer from Stage Tracks 3 actually reached out to me. I said he liked the video and said he wanted to give an additional three free giveaways to my subscribers. So I will be giving away a total of four full versions of Stage Tracks 3. Three from Peter and then one from me. Many thanks to Peter from Stage Tracks 3 for doing this. I really appreciate that. That was very cool of him to reach out. And as always, don't forget to use the timestamps down below if there's a specific topic that you're interested in. All right, but let's go ahead and get started. So first I'm gonna show you how to control Stage Tracks 3 with MIDI commands using an external pedal or controller. I'm gonna be using the Morningstar MC8. I love this pedal. It's extremely customizable, but you can use any pedal you want. So I'm just gonna be demoing four commands for this sake. Play, stop, scroll, up and scroll down with the lyrics. So Stage Tracks 3 doesn't have any specific commands to send. So for example, some gear will say, if you want to make Stage Tracks play, you need to send CC45 at the velocity of 127. Instead, Stage Tracks just has it where you customize your own. Now, FYI, this is not a video about how to program MIDI. If you are interested in understanding what MIDI programming is, I have a whole video explaining that. So check that out for sure. You still should be able to see what this device can do. And you might not actually even need to know MIDI programming. Programming. With the Morningstar, you will. With other MIDI devices, you might not. I have programmed my Morningstar to send on MIDI channel 9 and the following CC commands, and I have them all sending at a value of 127, which works best, because I did try this with sending a value of 0 at first, and it didn't work. Again, if none of that makes sense, you should watch my video. I'm going to screen record. So go to settings, and under settings, you're going to scroll down to where it says remote control. So I'm using the Witty Jack. This is a wireless MIDI device, which is great because especially if I'm using, you know, the USB out, I don't have a way to get, you know, a USB device in. So I'm gonna load up the MIDI Bluetooth devices. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna connect to the Witty Jack. That's really nice that it allows a Bluetooth connection. So next I'm gonna go to assign actions right here. So these are all the actions that you can assign here. So these are all of them that you can do on the screen. Pause it if you want to read what all the options are. To me, the ones I'm gonna control are start playback, stop playback, scroll up just half page and scroll down half page. This is really simple. So for start playback, I'm gonna click that one and it says press any key on the remote device. So I'm gonna push it on my device and it has assigned it. It knows that I programmed this button to be MIDI channel nine and CC 100. That's what I decided. And now it knows, okay, when I receive on MIDI channel nine, MIDI CC 100, it'll start playback. Just do the same thing for stop. It's learning, wait, it's waiting. And now it has assigned. That's why I'm saying you don't need to know how to do MIDI programming necessarily if you are able to connect it and then just hit a button. If it's programmed to send something, it will send that command to Stage Tracks. Pretty cool. Scroll up half a page and scroll down a half a page. That is it. So now when I go out here, let's load up December again. So now I can scroll down. I can scroll up half pages. I can hit play. December. And I can hit stop. And that is it. Scroll down, scroll up. Very, very cool. And again, you get all these other ones in here. You can control basically all of these with a MIDI device if you would like. Something else that's really cool is you can also send program commands in order to load a certain song. So I'm going to go to songs and I'm going to go to the song All Star. I'm going to go to the info on that one and I'm going to scroll down where it says song select command. So I'm going to hit learn. And again, so I've already programmed two of them up here that I was going to show you for All Star and In The End. These are the program changes that I've programmed this device to send. And it says waiting for a program change or SS event. So this one is a program change. So I have this one set to send program change 100 on channel 9. And now watch what happens when I'm on December. Doesn't matter like what whatever I'm doing in here. As soon as I push this button, it loads up All Star. Pretty cool, right? I'm going to do the same thing for In The End. I have so many songs in here. I really do need to start using the multi-track output. So in the end, scroll down to the bottom, MIDI song select learn, 
I already have it saved. And that's what I love about the Morningstar. I can put in what each button does. I don't just have to remember A, B, C, and D. It's really cool. But in the end, which is program to send, program change 101 on MIDI channel 9. And now watch what happens. When I'm on All-Star, go to in the end, go to All-Star. Go to in the end, hit play, in stop, page down, page up. Go back to All-Star, play, All -Star. stop, page down page up. Super cool. Really, really easy to use and very, very valuable. Okay, so not only can it receive MIDI from external devices, but can also send MIDI as well to control your external gear. So I'm going to be using this to control my HX stomp, but you can control any device that receives MIDI information. So this is great. So when it goes into the chorus and it needs to hit this button right here, I never need to do it. The computer will send it for me. When it goes back to the verse, it'll go back here. Very, very cool. So you do want to make sure that you go under your settings, playback settings, MIDI out. So you want to make sure that the out ports, if you're sending anything to anything else, you want to make sure that you're, in my case, it's Bluetooth. So you want to make sure that Bluetooth is enabled. Otherwise, none of this is going to work. So once again, they made this very, very easy. The way that you do this, it's under the lyrics. So we're going back to December and we're going to the lyrics part. And again, they made this so easy. See this MIDI button down here? You click it and it says it's waiting for MIDI events. So basically what you do is I'm going to hit play and the song, December. you know, will start playing. Just Let me pause it. As it's playing, I'm just going to push the buttons that need to happen happen as they're supposed to happen. So you know what? One second in, I'll push this button. On three seconds in, I'll push this button. So watch, this is really simple. So I'm gonna hit MIDI, I'm gonna hit play. December, guitar, and ready, go. And I'm going to pause it right there. And you can see it did all of these things and it left this in code. Do a MIDI command at two seconds and four milliseconds to send MIDI CC 69. Nice. A value of one on channel four. So you don't even have to know your MIDI commands in here. You don't even have to know what they mean. I know that, you know, MIDI CC 69, value of one, value of two, value of three will change the snapshots. That's what I'm trying to do. But you don't even need to know that. You just say, hey, this is the button that I want you to turn on at this moment in time on the HX knob and it'll do it. So watch. So I hit December. Hit play, watch what happens. December, guitar, and See, ready, it's doing go. all these commands that I already did. Load number, and then it'll load number two. And then it'll load number three. Oh, wait, no, yeah, and that's where I stopped. All of that just does it automatically. That's really cool, and man, they made it easy. Obviously, it's a little time consuming, but once it's done, I mean, you have control over all of your pedals. You don't have to pedal dance anymore. The other option is that you can program it manually. So obviously, this is going to take some more time, but you'll likely need to do this for like program changes and stuff like that. So you're going to put into brackets. So I'll show you MIDI program changes and controller changes. So the command is MIDI at what point? So how many minutes, colon, how many seconds? So let's do 11 seconds. Dot how many milliseconds? So let's do 45, just a random number. Colon to end it. Space PC, which is program change. I'm going to say program change five at four, which is MIDI channel four. So what this is, is you say in brackets, MIDI at what point in minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, and then do a colon to end the timing. I'm going to send a program change, program change five on MIDI channel four. Now the command for a controller change. So again, I'm going to push that bracket button. This is going to be MIDI at, again, the time. So let's do zero minutes. 12 seconds and 33 milliseconds colon space cc this time i'm going to say 50 controller change 50 dot 127 which is the value at what channel for if this is not making sense to you it's because you probably haven't watched my video you need to watch that video but again what point in time in this case it's 12 seconds and 33 milliseconds you're going to send the midi cc command midi cc 50 which i know enables this button value of 127 that'll have to, you'll have to mess with that you know midi goes from zero to 127 so usually zero means off and 127 means on that might not matter for this one you'll have to mess with it and then at what channel number my hx stomp responds on midi channel four that's the way have it configured so it's going to send it out on MIDI channel 4. So watch what happens now when I play this. December, so again we're going to start it from the beginning. And ready, so go. it's going to go through all those commands that I hit with learn and then you'll see at about 12 seconds it's going to load preset 5 and then it'll push this button. So here we go load preset 5 and push that second button. There you go. So that's really cool. You have the ability to program all of those by yourself or just with the learn function. One more thing that you can do is you can also do it on play, on stop, or continue. So if I wanted to send program change 10 on stop, you put in parentheses, you would say MIDI colon stop, and then put a colon at the end. So MIDI, you're gonna send, it doesn't matter what time, when I hit stop, I'm going to do program change 10, and again, 
on channel four. So as soon as I hit the stop button, it will load program change four. And just to show you another one just for play, so MIDI at play colon, I'm going to load program change five on MIDI channel four. I'm going to change it to a different patch. Let's just go to patch one. As soon as I hit play, it's going to load patch five. And as soon as, as, soon as I hit stop, it'll load patch 10. December, Instantly loaded patch five. And now it's going through all the, go. all the buttons that I programmed it to do. As soon as I hit stop, it'll load preset 10. There you go. Pretty sweet. A couple other things. You can go into settings and then go into playback settings. And you can go down here and you can send MIDI automatically when you load something, when you play something, or when you stop something. So you can say every time that I hit play, I want to send a MIDI command. So let's say every time I hit play, I want it to... Well, I don't know what it would be on this one because I've already programmed so much stuff. So every time I hit play, I want it to load, push this button. And every time I hit stop, I want it to send that command. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose just a completely different song, something that I haven't done anything for yet so then as soon as i hit play it's going to push this button as soon as i hit stop it'll hit this one dirty play, little secret and then stop it'll always do that every single time that you do that i'm personally going to leave that off because i would rather have that programmed for each individual preset but you might be able to find that useful you do also get virtual midi out so if you do need to control other apps you can do that as well from here which is really cool and you can choose your midi ports you can turn on the virtual midi out and then you can you know host a session if you're controlling other apps so if another app has a virtual midi out you can control other apps on your ipad as well Pretty sweet. All right, so that is the end of the Stage Tracks 3 video series, almost an hour long with all of them. So congratulations if you made it all the way through. Do me a favor, just hit the thumbs up button if you found this content helpful. This series really did take a while to put together. I know YouTubers are annoying with asking for hitting the like button, but hitting the like button really does support the channel and help recommend the video to more people, so I would appreciate it. Also, don't forget that one of my subscribers will win the full version of this app. I will send you an iTunes store code that will give you enough money into your account in order to purchase the full version of this. So all you have to do to enter is just leave a comment down below. Any comment left down below will be entered. If you left one on all three videos, you will triple your chances of winning. And I will be doing the drawing on Monday after this video comes out. So on this date, if you're watching in the future, and I will be doing the giveaways on my Instagram, Facebook and YouTube stories. That seems to be the best way to do it. So I will do it in my stories and then I will contact the winner. Please do not ever, ever respond to scammers. I will never, ever, ever ask you for money for these giveaways. So thank you guys again for watching. Just as a side note, I have gotten multiple requests of, hey, can I leave you a tip or something like that? It's very nice that I'm getting a lot of those comments. It is not required, but I did sign up for the buy me a cup of coffee as well as at scottyoumusic.com slash tips. I do have that available now as well. So if you found this content helpful, I'm not going to say no to that, but it, it is obviously not required. But thank you guys for asking about that. I appreciate it. And that is linked down below as well. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Do me a favor and leave a comment down below on what helped you out the most and how you plan to use this app. Like I said, I've been using this app a ton and it has been extremely helpful with my live performances with multiple bands that I play with. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at scottyoumusic.com music on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Be sure to leave a comment down below to be entered for that giveaway, and I'll see you guys next time.